Okay, uh, let's talk about the consumer decision making process in today's video. Now, consumer decision making process, it might sound like a very, very difficult topic to understand. But if you think about yourself as a consumer and how many decisions that you have made as a consumer, this would be a very, very simple conversation uh, and a very, very simple topic for you to understand. So consumer decision making process is nothing but the process that we go through as consumers when we are making decisions. Now, many times you might think that I don't go through a step-by-step -step formal approach when I'm solving a problem. But if you keep, if you think a little bit deeply about it, you will understand that you are indeed going through a decision making process, which hopefully you will understand better after we complete this video. Now, this particular decision making process is a very, very important and a very long topic. So this will be a abridged version of the decision making process. If you want to learn more, there are other videos that I'll also upload uh, that are in the channel that you can take a look at to understand the different concepts associated with the decision making process. So briefly, when we are talking about the consumer decision making process, think about it as a process which helps you solve a particular problem that you have. So the first step when it comes to the consumer decision making process is problem recognition. The first step is when we recognize that we have a problem, right? So once we recognize we have the problem, then only we think about the other things that we need to do to solve that particular problem. Now a very, very basic, simple example, my anniversary is coming up, right? So what gift do I give my wife? So that is a problem that I have. right now. Another problem that I'm having right now, my TV broke, right? So I need to buy a new television. That is another problem that I'm having, right? So uh, similar to that, I looked at the frizz in the morning and then there is no milk. Now that's another problem that no I No milk. So I have as a consumer and as a person a number of problems. So how do I go solving that problem, right? And whenever you think about problem recognition, think about it as what I want versus what I have got, right? So you recognize a problem when there is a gap between what you want and what you have, right? I want a television. I want to watch uh, my soap operas. Sorry, I don't watch soap operas, but I want to watch football. But right now I cannot watch football. So there is a gap between what I need and what I have, right? So there is a gap between need and got. I got no television to watch the football show, but I want to watch the football show. The problem with the anniversary is I don't have anything to give my wife as a gift for the anniversary is my actual state and my desired state is my wife will be really, really happy with the gift that I give her. Just like there is a gap between what you have versus what you need, you can think about problem recognition also in terms of your actual state versus your desired state. So my actual state is right now, I cannot watch football. My desired state is I will be watching football. So there is a gap and that gap leads consumers to recognize that they have a problem. I want to drink tea in the morning and then there is no milk. So the desired state is I want to be satisfied drinking the tea and the actual state is I don't have milk so I cannot make tea. So there is a gap between what you want and what you got. Right? There is a gap between your actual state and your desired state. And this leads consumers to recognize a problem. And many times what might happen is marketers will in some way induce problem recognition. Or another term that is very, very widely used is need recognition as well. So the marketers will, I was perfectly fine watching television, which I haven't done because my TV is broke.
but I was perfectly fine watching a television show and then suddenly in the middle they show me a very very juicy burger advertisement now suddenly I feel hungry right so the marketers are trying to induce a gap between my actual state and my desired state and that's what they are using advertising for so problem recognition or need recognition is a simple concept which is what you have versus what you want what is your actual state versus what is your desired state so once you recognize the problem what do you generally do so if it is a problem that you've solved in the past and you've solved the problem in the past successfully you will just repeat whatever you did in the past there is not much thought process that will go into it right you will just remember oh okay yeah when i had this problem last time i just did this and it solved the problem so your decision making process to solve the problem is going to be very very short because you already have information on how to solve the particular problem successfully and satisfactorily right but if you encounter a problem which you've not faced before then how do you go about solving the problem you don't have any information about what solves this particular problem so what will you do you will seek out information on how to solve this particular problem now you might seek out information from your friends you might seek out your information from your family nowadays many times what you will do is you will just go online and you try to seek out information on how this particular problem can be solved right you will go read many blog posts you will watch youtube videos and you try to gather as much information as possible depending upon how much effort you want to put in to solve this particular problem right so taking the example of the milk you can think that i will not put in a lot of inf uh, effort in the decision making process because i recognize the problem i immediately knew how to solve the problem based upon the internal information that i already had so i had already internal information on which brand of milk I would buy where I could buy it how much it would cost all of those informations are already inside of me in my memory right so I'll just use that information to solve my particular problem no milk but if I did not have that information then I will go out and I'll seek information from external sources it could be my friends it could be my family it could be the blog posts it could be youtube videos it could be pinterest whatever um, may provide you with the particular information to solve the problem you will go out and you will seek information to solve the problem so let's talk a little bit about the television last time when i bought the tv was around, around six years ago now within the six years i would assume that being a technological product the television has evolved quite a lot all right check out this bad boy 12 megabytes of ram 500 megabyte hard drive built-in spreadsheet capabilities and a modem that transmits at over 28,000 bps wow what are you going to use it for games and stuff right so if the television has evolved quite a lot then in that case my information and decision that i made six years ago may not be as relevant today so what i will what i am doing right now is i am searching for information i know i had a samsung television and that samsung television was really good but it was a 46 inch television now i want to buy a television that is maybe 675 or more than 75 inches now those are different types of products because the price is going to be high and i don't know anything about how to buy televisions right so in that case what i'm doing right now is i'm going through all the information source i'm watching youtube videos about which are the best televisions 75 inch televisions to buy uh, i'm reading blog posts on what are the different attributes that those television have so 75 is an inch is one attribute what are the other attributes that I should be looking at because I don't know the, I only know that I need a 75 inch television or larger right I don't know how much it cost I went out and I saw that it cost anywhere between 1500 to four or five thousand dollars now there were like really really how many brands are there there is Samsung there is LG there is 
TLC and then there is uh, Sony right so those are the four big brands that are available in the market and they all have different technologies like QLED for Samsung OLED for Sony LG might have its own proprietary technique and I don't know what the difference is between those right and Samsung even if I consider Samsung there is a lot of information to process right it has 6 series 7 series 8 series and then it has 2018 model, 2019 model, 2020 model, and then it has QLED versus UHD. Uh, what is the difference between USD and 4K? I don't know. So there is a lot of information that I need to process, right? But again, another thing that you need to keep in mind is how much information you are going to process is going to depend upon how much involvement you have in the product category. Now I might spend a couple of months just researching this television whereas somebody else might just go to Best Buy ask the person which is the best television to buy and then the person will tell them this is the best television and they will buy it. That is because I'm more involved in this particular product category than somebody else is. Right? So consumer involvement or interest in the product category is also going to be very very important. The first step is I recognize a problem. The second step is searching for information on how to solve this particular problem. Now, once you figured out what are the things that you need to keep in mind, what are the things that you should look for, how you are going to buy it, where you are going to buy it, how much it costs, what are the different attributes associated with it, you might come up with a very, very big list of different brands and different specifications associated with a specific product. But you cannot actually sit through and evaluate all the alternatives you have because it would be too much information right because you have a lot of choice so what do consumers generally do is they will break the choice down to small pieces just like i did through the information search process i narrowed my choices down to a few alternatives so i'm either going to buy a samsung 6 series 2020 model 75 inch television or i'm going to buy a Samsung 8 series 2020 model now they have different like TN versus RN so there are different specifications associated with this but and also like the other things that are important is the like, number of SDMI output uh, is different the number of USB is different and the way the display works is also slightly different but now I'm down to a few alternatives when it comes to alternative evaluation now those few numbers that you come to at the end of your information search is called your consideration set so consideration set is the small number of alternatives that you are actually going to evaluate right so my consideration set now consists of only two alternatives now what i will do is i'll spend more time and effort thinking about what are the differences and similarities between two alternatives and what will give me the most value right so that is how i will evaluate the alternatives now we'll also talk about in other video the different process associated with alternative evaluation but this is just an introduction to the decision making process think about your own process whenever you bought something right in, in the end it narrows down to a few choices that is what you are uh, that number of few choices is called the consideration set now you are going to think about how do you evaluate the products that you have in that set so i have two maybe somebody else might have four so they will evaluate between those four and there are different rules that consumers might have just like i had 75 inch is my border so anything below 75 inch is not considered at all so that was my rule similarly other consumers might have other rules as well Right? So those rules they will apply during the evaluation of alternative stays and then they will evaluate the different types of product. And then after they have evaluated the products, the next step is to purchase the particular product. So the first step, recognize the problem. My TV is broken. I want to watch soccer. Or I want to watch football. I can't watch it. The TV is broke. Right? The next step is do the information search to figure out how do I solve this particular problem. The third step is figure out what are the different, figure out which amongst the different alternatives that you have arrived at 
at the information at the end of the information search process you are going to choose so after the evaluation of alternatives you are saying like okay i will buy this particular product so for me it could be i'm leaning more towards samsung 8 series 2020 75 inch television right so tn 7500 i think is the name so i reached the decision that i will buy this particular product but i have not gone out to buy the particular product right now so i've arrived at the purchase stage but consumers may at the purchase stage decide not to buy the particular product because purchase stage is the stage where you decide whether you're going to purchase the product or you're not going to purchase the product so consumers may decide to do either right so i have not yet purchased the particular product I may delay the purchase, purchase. So if Thanksgiving is nearby, what might what I might do is okay. I know which product I want to buy. I'll just delay my purchase until Thanksgiving, and then I buy the particular product, or I delay the uh, purchase till a sales event, and then I buy the product. Right. So purchase process is when the purchase step is when you decide whether or not you want to buy the product. Now, once you bought the product. The next step is going to be post-purchase evaluation, which is you evaluate whether or not the decision that you made was a good one or a bad one, right? So if I bought a gift to my wife and I see her happy face, the post-purchase evaluation would be like, yeah, the decision was the right decision. But if I see her sad face or if I see her hiding away from me, then in that case, I know that it was a bad decision right similarly with the television after i buy the television i look at the television in my room and when i'm consuming the television i might figure out something that is wrong with the television now that will lead me to have a dissatisfied feeling the post purchase evaluation if i'm happy i'll be satisfied if I'm unhappy, then I'll be dissatisfied. Or if I'm dissatisfied, then I'll be unhappy, right? Because I they went through all this process of making the decision. And at the end, if my decision turned out to be incorrect, I will be pretty upset. No milk. So these are the five steps of the consumer decision making process. Problem recognition, information search, evaluation of alternatives, purchase and post purchase behavior. And we'll also talk in other videos about what are the things that will go into this decision making process. What are the sources of information? How do people evaluate between different alternatives? What are the things that affect their post purchase evaluation, right? And also, what are the things that make the consumer decision making process simple or complex, right? So when I buy the milk, it's a very simple process. I spend like three seconds thinking about buying the milk versus buying this television and this particular process has gone on for almost two months. So I haven't had a television for the last two months because I've been thinking about what type of television to buy right so the decision making process will be different for different people and we'll talk more about that in a separate video uh, thank you very much so uh, i very much assume that you wanted to know which television that i actually ended up buying because the purchase process itself took a very long period of time i went through a very extensive uh, information search and evaluation of alternative process because the product category that i wanted to buy had very high involvement, one, because of my interest in the product and other, another because it was an expensive purchase for me. It would cost at least about a thousand dollars or around that particular figure for me to buy a decent 75 inch television. So as you might remember, I had settled down upon Samsung's uh, TU 2020 model series of 75 inch, which was price somewhere around the thousand dollars give or take a couple of hundred based upon whether or not it was on sale 
So I was waiting for an opportune moment to actually go and buy that particular brand. I was looking at deals from Best Buy, Sam's Club, Walmart, Amazon, wherever I could find information about a good deal that was happening that suddenly, lo and behold, one day I get a flyer, Sam's Club, and they are having a, an August sale. So I looked at the flyer and what do I see? There is a 75 inch television for 799 bucks. The original price is supposed to be around $1,000. So there is a $200 discount. On top of that, they will also give me a $75 gift card. So it filled quite a bit of my evaluative criteria or the criteria that I was looking for. One, that it'd be cheap, a very, very major criteria for me. Another, that it'd be 75 inches, another big criteria met that it be a 4K, another big criteria that was met, have as many SDMI input as possible, and it had uh, three, and then uh, that it be from a very good name brand company, and the TV that I ended up purchasing was not a Samsung, but a LG television. So an LG 75 inch UN 7300 series, I ended up purchasing that product which was not in my consideration set. And that is one of the reason why a marketer needs to move quickly to finalize the purchase process. Because now, after going the information search process and evaluation of alternative process, I possess enough information or enough knowledge that I can make a decision really quickly. And which means if I don't buy a product, a competing product offer might seem very very good to me and might provide me a better value and I would might change my decisions that's why you see that a lot of companies try to make you buy as soon as possible you put something on a cart in Amazon or anywhere online and then you might forget that you have put the item on the cart or you might change your mind later on so a lot of companies will try to make it so that when you reach the purchase process you are able to immediately buy the product, Amazon's one-click button. Why did they, do they have a one-click button when there were like initially three or four steps where you could you have to go to the cart and then you check out and then you get a thank you page, but now you can just click on it, the one-click button, and then you immediately purchase the product because they don't want you to linger in, in the purchase step. They want you to be able to completely and efficiently buy the product that you want to buy right then and there. It's been a couple of weeks since I have the television and I really, really like it so far. So my post-purchase evaluation so far is really good, but only after a couple of years will I know how uh, durable the television actually is. And then I'll have a post-purchase evaluation for my next purchase and the next cycle when I want to buy another television. Another thing that I wanted to talk about a little bit was also associated with the different types of decision-making process. We already talked about extensive decision-making process and habitual decision-making process, where there is not a lot of involvement. You have habitual decision-making like buying milk, you buy it out of habit. You don't need to do a lot of information search. You don't need to evaluate your alternatives. Your decision-making process is very short and habitual in nature versus extensive decision-making, where it is a very highly involved product category and then you spend a lot of time and resources trying to make the correct decision where the decision making process is very very long so you saw the example of this television in my case right between those two is another decision making type which is called the limited decision making process so limited decision making process is where you are a habitual purchaser of the product right so you buy the per, uh, product again and again and again but then suddenly you go to the store and then you see that there is a new product that is available which solves the problem that your habitual decision making process was solving so far. So you go and buy the same cereal again and again and again, and then you suddenly see a new cereal brand right next to your cereal that you have been buying, right? So now you have to go through a limited decision making process because you are trying to incorporate this new information to make the decision, right? And in a sense, my television purchase experience at the end turned out to be kind of a mix between an extensive decision making process where I reached the purchase step, but then I didn't purchase the product. Now I have all the information that I need 
And then for when the LG television entered the fray, my decision making process, you can think of it as being a limited decision making process because there is a product that I was already going to buy and now there is this new product which I don't need to evaluate a lot because I am now an expert in evaluating between those two alternatives, right? So limited decision making is when it's, it falls somewhere between habitual decision making and extensive decision making where you know a lot of the things that you need to know about the decision that you're going to make and then you only need to spend a limited amount of time deciding which product you want to buy.